Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an edible icing case for fondant fancy cakes. So the most time consuming part of this whole process is actually setting up the tin for you to drape the icing over um, and leave it to dry. Now I'm working on a five inch tin here because my cake was four inches square. Um, I always use a tin one inch bigger than the actual cake that I'm making. So what I'm doing is on the bottom of the tin, I'm covering it with some parchment paper or baking paper, and I'm just sellotaping it to the sides of the tin. I prefer to have this over the tin so that when I place the icing over it, it doesn't actually stick to the tin itself. Once you've covered the whole base, just take a long piece of sellotape and just wrap around the tin again, just to make sure you're holding that paper properly in place so you don't have any issues later. So now we need to make some cone shapes. We're going to stick these to the side of the tin and this is where your icing will drape over and this is what's going to give it its shape. I'm just using normal printer paper and I'm folding over and rolling it into a cone shape. Make sure that the top of it is really pointy as this will help later with the shape. Use a bit of sellotape along the side to hold this together and then just trim off the, the bottom um, end of it. You will need to adjust again later when you come to add this to your tin so it fits the side of your tin, the depth of your tin, but you can adjust that later. So the number of cones you need all depends on the size tin. I needed eight. I'm putting one on each corner and then one between each corner. So use a bit of sellotape around the top part of the cone, the pointy part, and start attaching this to the side of your tin. Just use some sellotape. You will find sellotape can be a bit tricky against the parchment paper because it doesn't really stick. So try and get a bit on the parchment and on the tin itself to hold it in place. And go around the tin and do all the corners first. I always find that easier to do the corners first. And then I start adding the pieces in the middle. If you're doing an eight inch tin, um, you might put two in between to get more of a frill. But because this is a small tin, I didn't need that many. That's all my cones added and you can see they come to the bottom of my tin so that they're the same depth as my tin. I use a bit of sellotape in the cone and around the bottom of the tin just to really hold it properly in place. And then I take a long piece of sellotape, go all the way around the top part just to make sure these are sticking properly in place and not going to cause me issues once I lay the icing over the top of this. Go all the way around and just stick them properly and firmly in place. So once you've finished um, sticking them all to the sides of the tin, you're going to take some sellotape and go twice across the top and twice down over the cake tin. I just do this from one side to the other, sticking it on the tin, not the paper itself, just making sure that it's holding this in place properly. So when you come to adding your icing over the top, it doesn't move. So I'm using Saracino modeling paste here. I've rolled it about four to five millimeters thick. Get your prepared tin and you're going to drape the paste over the top of the tin now. And you will see it immediately starts forming over the cones that you've placed onto the tin. But use your hands to gently work your icing around. It is great modeling paste this and the fact that it's not drying out too quickly while you're trying to work. So there's a lot of time for adjustment. You will see here, I realize on the left hand side, it's going a little bit flat onto my mat. So I just gently picked it up, pulled it over a bit more to the right and I worked with it again and it didn't leave any cracks or damage or anything like that. Get it set properly in place and make sure you've got as many waves and curves as you like for the tin itself or for the wrapper itself. Gently pick up your tin and place this onto a cake drum. So I just adjusted a little bit more because obviously this is what it is going to dry on for a couple of days and I want to make sure that I've got all the waves and everything that I need. I just used a smoother on here to make sure that it was properly flat on the cake tin itself and then just adjust slightly where you think you want the, the frilling to come out a little bit more to give you more effect on the actual wrapper that your cake will sit in. Now you're going to set this aside um, and leave it to dry out for, for two days before removing the tin. After two days of setting, gently turn your wrapper over and you will see your tin again and 
gently wriggle the tin a little bit and lift out it should lift out very easily this is not 100% dry but it's holding its shape absolutely perfectly and it's got a little bit of flexibility still but I will still leave it for another day before I add the cake I rounded the corners on my little boards that I'm using for my cake because the fondant fancy itself isn't actually straight on the sides or on the corners once I'd ganached my cake again all I did was popped a glove on my hand and I rubbed the edges and the corners of the cake to round it off nicely so when I added the icing on it fell onto rounded edges for a larger fondant fancy cake I would actually bake a hemisphere cake and pop that on the top for the icing part but as this was a small one all I'm doing is adding a domed piece of icing on the top before I ice my cake just gently place it on top I use some cling film over it to give it that rounded effect and then just use a little bit of ganache to stick it nicely in place before you ice your ready cake once iced just use the side of your hand to smooth around this dome part on the top of your cake so that there's no massive air bubbles left use some sugar glue to mark where to add the icing part for the top of the cake again this is just saracino modeling paste that i've rolled into a thin long sausage shape and i did it in pale yellow just because i wanted something a little bit different and just gently stick this in place on top to actually finish the effect of the cake itself so it looks like a fondant fancy and then I set this cake aside to dry overnight before lifting to place into the wrapper itself. Um, it's much easier to then place it into the wrapper because the icing is 100% dry on the cake. To add your cake into the wrapper, place a little bit of ganache into the bottom of the wrapper. Gently ease the cake off your ganache plate and you will see that it's set properly here that I can literally pick it up in my hands and gently place in the wrapper itself in place. And there you got them nice fully edible cake and edible cake wrapper for your fondant fancy cake i really hope you enjoyed this video